sisters, Aaron Clark here with Spirit of Truth Christian Church Ministries. Back for another couple of steps along the journey of killing the canker worm of marriage. So I hope that you have been uh, journeying with us and working on your marriage. You know, so often in marriage, we will find ourselves working on everything except our marriage. And when the intimacy starts to deteriorate, we find ourselves in dire straits, not realizing that it really, it really was the work that we should have been doing all along. And so we want surgery to happen and we want a miracle to happen. And that's why this whole series has been so important to me and I pray it's important to you as well. So the um, last time we talked about owning your marriage and taking responsibility and understanding that God would hold you accountable for your marriage. On this episode, I want you to think about something. And this is this is the next step in killing this worm. And, and that is to conclude what you believe about your spouse. Now, that might sound a little ambiguous as to what the meaning is. So let me let me explain a little bit what I mean. You know how you can be into some intense fellowship uh, with your spouse and and sometimes you may either be thinking uh, suspicious about something and, and you may even voice that suspicion. Uh, you may say things like, you are inconsiderate or you are mean or you are lazy or you don't want to do anything for me or you don't care about me or you don't care about my friends or just these kind of things that are aroused by a suspicion that may be provoked by a, a particular action. Well, if you conclude that that is true about your spouse, then that begins to shape your attitude, your behavior, and ultimately it will shape your words. And when you get those kind of toxic words starting to spew out into your marriage, there's no way you can expect anything good to come from that. Um, the Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. It says, what Jesus said this, he said, if you pray and believe, he says, you have mountain moved. And he says, and you will have whatsoever you say that you believe. So if you conclude and believe that your spouse is no good, they're lazy, and all of these other things that you can believe, Jesus Christ said, you're going to have whatsoever you say. We hear things like death and life are in the power of the tongue. Um, so we need to learn how to conclude what we really believe about our spouse. When my wife and when I got this, I realized that I would always be meditating on the flaws of my wife. And, and ultimately those words would start to come out. And the more the words came out, the more I thought about them. And the more I thought about them, the more I focused on them. And I would be waiting on that flaw to surface. And it really made my relationship, my attitude, my words toward my wife become toxic. And it didn't help us at all. It, it really only pulled us apart. So this week, I just want you to think about that little nugget right there. Just, are you voicing uh, something that you believe in your heart from an action? Because it's not to say that we don't do things that are inconsiderate, that we don't do things that, that can be mean, or, or some things are actually true. Like you could actually have a spouse that's unorganized. That might be your strength. That might be the area you need to serve in. But nevertheless, whatever it is that's true about your spouse, you need to conclude what you really believe. Did you marry a lazy person? Well, I didn't know they were lazy until I married them, Brother Aaron. Are you sure they're lazy? Are they getting up going to work every day and, and maybe just coming home and not doing more than that? I mean, it could be another issue altogether that's making you conclude something that's actually not true. That's what I want to challenge you on. Conclude what you really believe. And if you really believe that your spouse is loving, caring, that your spouse is a hardworking person, that your spouse really respects you at the end of the day, and I'm not saying they haven't done anything that's disrespectful, 
then you need to start voicing those things to them. You need to let them know, you know, you've done some things that are very respectful for me. You've done things that prove to me you are hard work, that you're caring, that you're loving, that you're forgiving, that you're gracious. And let them know that you affirm the good things in them. And then learn how to resolve the conflicts from the issues that arouse those concerns and have made you say those things. Um, you know, the, one of the first things I would say is if you ever voice something that you don't believe is absolutely true about your spouse, you need to go to them and let them know that you, you're sorry. Apologize, ask them to forgive you for saying things about them that are not true, and let them know what you really believe. Believe me, that'll build their heart up and that'll show a whole lot of improvement in your attitude. It'll start to mo remove some of that toxicity that that worm leaves as he crawling around y'all house. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to laugh, but that's what I visualize, you know, is leaving this little oozy, sticky, nasty, toxic substance that's making everybody sick. And you can clean that up with the right words and the right thought patterns about your spouse. Uh, the Bible says, whatsoever is, things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. These are the things you want to think about, particularly about your spouse. Hey, I'm Aaron Clark. God bless you till next time when we talk about the next step we're going to take, resolving. It's a big step. God bless you till next time. Peace.